being real today on Coffee with Conrad. Winning! days when I just uh, wake up with a bad attitude, you know, and I'm, I'm like, you know, what am I going to talk about today? And uh, I was laying there in a prayerful state and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I used to have the pond. Do you guys remember that? I used to do the revelations from the pond. And then we're over here in um, Mississippi now. I don't have a pond and I don't Things aren't the same. <laughs> They're not the same. And uh, I can get apathetic, you know. And sometimes I just need to take the mask off of everything's okay. And I just need to confess my faults, you know, one to another so that we can pray for each other. I need you guys to pray for me so that we can be healed. And I've been noticing this stream of teachings that I'm prayerfully getting about how we need to actually, if you look at them, we need to be proactive in everything that we do. So I'm just going to be kind of real today. You know, there's a war for our mind. That was a recent teaching. We must be overcomers. We can see that in the tenor of Scripture. In our Bible study, I found out that God personifies the word sin. Sin has a desire for us. It's, he's on our heels all the time. He lies at the door. He wants in. He's proactive. And we also know the, the psalm that who shall ascend the hill of the Most High, those with the clean hands and a pure heart. And I'm thinking about going up this mountain. You know, there's gravity, dude. There's gravity. The world's trying to pull you down. Your flesh is trying to pull you down. Never mind the devil. I mean, you know, he's, he's not our only problem. You know, there's so many things. There's so many temptations on this planet. And it, it's so easy to get in despair. But it's like we're fighting against gravity. We've got to go up. We've got to go higher. You know, I wake up with a cold and I'm like, man, I just don't like this. I, this, this is just getting to be too much, you know? And then I think of things and I, I'm trying to use these struggles as um, something that I can teach upon. Maybe I can seek the Lord for an overcoming key or something like that. And I want to be able to help people with the things that I go through. And I'm often looking at these key scriptures that I think about these key events in the Bible where Peter, you know, he's going towards Jesus in the storm, but he has to proactively employ a faith. You know, Jesus is a person, but there's also, you've got to do, the book, the Bible isn't a bunch of formulas. But the just shall live by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. So we do have to use faith in our relationship with Jesus Christ. This means we've got to expend energy. He doesn't just come up and pour things into our laps. You know, we, we've got to use faith. And, you know, Peter was looking at this opportunity of walking on the water, kind of like I would think of going to Six Flags or something. Hey, this is going to be fun. You know, let's let's walk on the water. Let's use some faith. But, you know, when you start walking, you know, I, I always say the higher the level, the bigger the devil. Well, dude, the higher the level, the farther you got to fall, you know, and it don't. it's not always the devil that makes you fall. Peter simply was walking in a high level mode of faith, walking on water, people. He was walking on water. And he looked off just a little bit. Do you see the, the formula in, in this? It's, I know Jesus' relationship. But the author of Hebrews says we've got looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, which means we've got to use faith. We've got to walk in faith. And here we go. We see Peter. 
He's looking off a little bit, and then these rationale starts creeping in. It didn't say the devil said, look at the storm, you know? And he started sinking. It's so much easier to take your eyes off Jesus sometimes. You know, it's easy to just sulk, be depressed. You know, it's Christmas, and... (laughs) You know, a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I'm broke, and we got it's Christmas coming up, and Jesus wants me to be an overcomer. You know, pride goes before a fall, and, and sometimes you're just like you're beating yourself up, and you're even using scripture to do it. It's so much easier to just put your put your pillow over your head and go to sleep sometimes. You know, so I've been thinking about this. This I've been praying about it, and. Um, I was with Susan this morning, and we prayed in the car on the way to to work. And then I'm like, man, you know, this is what I teach against. You know, pray. it's if you only play pray in the car, you know. And so I've been thinking recently about these teachings that have been erupting in my spirit. And for us to be overcomers, we need to know why we need to be an overcomer. We need to reach deep down inside of ourselves. And see what inspires us to be overcomers. What is it that makes us want to ascend the hill of the Most High God? What is it that makes us want to have clean hands and a pure heart? Why do we want to even do that? Now... Speaking of the hill, you know, you got to go up the hill. There's going to be gravity. And you, it seems like you got to fight your whole way up there. You got to fight your flesh. You got to fight the devil. But one of our things is we need to examine it. We need to examine the motivation of why we even want to go up this hill, right? I've often talked many times about how moving away from hell is nothing compared to moving towards Jesus. Um, the illustration I use is you take two dots, and one of them is hell and one of them is Jesus. Well, you can go any direction to move away from hell, but you're not moving towards Jesus, right? There's a difference. If you move towards Jesus, moving away from hell is a byproduct of moving towards Jesus. So we need to find out why we want to move towards Jesus, there, there's a desire, and I'm often talking about, you know, Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desire of your heart. Desire means of the Father. It's Latin. And I think that's going to be a key to what we're going to be talking about today in being real. The very word desire means of the Father. You know, and there's scriptures that say if we lift up the Son of Man, he will draw a men to himself. There's a drawing that the Lord does. Something in the Father draws us. Now, we must not only logically, let's let, let's get a grip here, because sometimes logically we lose control. We just like, well, I'm just going to appeal to my emotion. Um, I just want to look at the storm. I just want to have a pity party, and I just want to drown and take a nap. Okay, that's emotional. And emotions, how many of you guys know that if we let emotions run our lives, we're going to have, we're going to be in disasters all the time. There's a, there's a point where the higher logical part of us needs to go, it's time to get a grip. It's time to get a grip. And I'm going to use an illustration here in a second. And, but, but I want to point out something else here too. When God commands us, you know, love him with all our heart, mind, and strength, it's a command. Now, how can we love him just because he commands us to do so, right? We can't just grit our teeth and love him. That's not how that works. We must reach deep down inside and and see the intrinsic reason inside of ourselves that causes us to love him. And we love him because he first loved us, Scripture says. We don't want to go to heaven just because it's a really nice place with streets of gold and we're going to get some cool crowns. You know, that's not it. 
if we don't want earthly riches here, we want God, you know, the heavenly riches, what, what's the point? That's why they cast their crowns at his feet. That's one of the reasons. They want Jesus. But we have to ask ourselves, why? Why do we want to go to heaven? There's going to be a heck of a homecoming, I'll tell you that. Sometimes I find myself musing on these thoughts, and I, uh, why do we want to go to heaven? Maybe it's so that we can see our loved ones to path, that, that have passed on. And sometimes I wonder why Job, he remained in his integrity during all those things that the Lord allowed Satan to do to him. Job says things like, though he slay me, I will trust in him. What was it inside of Job that even though he was receiving evil at the hands of the Lord, he says to his wife, foolish woman, should we not, should we only receive good things from the Lord and not evil? What is it that Job saw? You know, I was well on my way to making a lot of money, being very wealthy. However, I was depressed. If you read my book, Open Your Eyes, My Supernatural Journey, you'll see that money does not, <laughs> money does not buy you happiness. And when I finally met God, I was at, you know, I was at that pit of despair. I mean, I was going to end my life. And when I finally met him, it's that first love that Jesus talks about in Revelation. Repent and do your first love. It's that, it's that parable where it says, when you find the kingdom of heaven, it's worth selling all that you have to buy the field with that treasure in it. It's worth it. But there are times that we can get, even after that, you know, in Revelation he talks about repent and do thy first works. You know, I'm talking about Revelation 2, you know, under the church of Ephesus, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden sticks, candlesticks. Jesus is talking to the church here. He's talking to people that, no one to serve the Lord is the right thing to do, you know. But let's continue on. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how that canst bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they're apostles and are not and have found them liars and hast borne and hast patience for my name's sake, hast labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Remember the hill there? The, the hill, okay? You got to go up the hill. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent and do the first works, or else I will come to thee quickly and will remove the candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Now, this type of repenting is not, you don't just, it, it's not an external act. I mean, it, the external act will show your repentance. But notice he says, your first love. And I'm going to say that we need to examine ourselves. You know, it says examine yourselves, see if you're in the faith. And we need to start seeing the danger signs of apathy and complacency and lukewarmness. Danger signs like I'm not praying as much as I used to. Now, it's, if you pray because you feel that you have to, well, then you're going to be in the same boat. Oh, you're doing the right works and everything, but you've lost your zeal. You know, sometimes you just lose your zeal. And I'm, it's, it's something that happens. These people, they do the right things, but they've lost their first love. You've left their first love. That's what they did. So I used to say, you know, if every six months I don't have a major theological epiphany, I'm backslidden. But sometimes, you know, it can just, you can let your circumstances get to your head, you know. And uh, we need to examine ourselves to see if we see these danger signs of apathy and complacency and lukewarmness. If we start seeing that we pray only in the car instead of on our knees for 30 minutes. If we're not reading our Bible first thing in the morning and seeking the kingdom of heaven in his righteousness first. It says first. If we're not proactively, proactively listening to the Spirit of God, but listening to TV, you know, people, we're in ministry. If God, if we're people of God, then we need to listen to God, the voice of God in the marketplace. Somebody may need a word in seven, season, like the woman at the well, right? I remember one time I was, uh, 
I was on fire for God, man, and I'm like, Lord, I'll do anything. And you know, you don't really want to say that because he's at some point you're going to eat your words. And I was in Connie O'Hay at the mall in the parking lot, and the Lord told me, he said, okay, get down on your knees right now, lift your hands up in the air and worship me. And I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I thought I was sold out. And this has haunted me for years. God has used me since then, of course, but I've I've learned. I'm like, look, you know, don't make silly vows to the Lord. (laughs) You know, you don't know. Like Peter said, I'll go to the cross. I will do. I am not going to let you get hurt, Lord. And then he goes, yeah, you're going to deny me three times. So we need to watch what we say to the Lord. But the point is, we need to start looking at the danger signs. Um, if we're not proactively listening to the spirit in the public places, you know, God uses us in the public. He's not, he doesn't use us in the church. We're just sitting there for a sermon. Okay. If we start thinking that fasting is too much trouble, you know, well, I'm going to tell you this kind comes not out, but by fasting and prayer, dude, you want some success in your spiritual warfare, ramp up the fasting and prayer. Amen. But we've got to want to do this. And I'm, I'm telling you that these signs of us becoming apathetic and complacent and lukewarm, it's gravity. Sin's desire is for us. It lies at the door. It comes and knocks on the door. He's, hot, he's snipping at our heels all the time, and it's not always in the form of the devil. You know, it's not. It can be our own flesh. It can be as simple as turning on the TV and watching a show that causes you to go down this whole logical pattern. Like, for instance, I'm going to tell you something. People would never worship Buddha if they never heard that there was a Buddha. Do you understand? We have to watch what we put in ourselves. If if Jesus' words abide in us, then we're going to do Jesus' fruit, right? Why put poison in your mind? So this is the time that we desperately need to seek God because this when we seek God... That's where the manna falls, in his presence. When we're near God, that's where people get healed and are raised from the dead. That's where miracles happen. When we find ourselves selling everything that we have just to go where God is, that's where the miracles happen. When we find ourselves hanging out with the burning bush, that's where our heart beats within and we go, just like that first love, your heart races and you're like, I found it. I have found the reason to live. You know, when I said emotion, emotion can lead you off like the prodigal son. In Luke 15, you know, he said, give me my inheritance, Lord. And he wanted to go live it up and satisfy his flesh. And I'm going to tell you guys, sin, every time you do it, it's deceitful. It deceives you, like in Romans 7. It deceives you. It shows you the good of evil, you know, and it's like, oh, this is going to be good. And then all of a sudden, you're beating yourself up, and the devil is beating you up because you sin. So don't let your emotions or your flesh entice you and draw you away from Jesus. The prodigal son, the prodigal son in Luke fifteen seventeen, it says, he came to himself and he said, how many hard servants of my fathers have bread enough and, and to spare, and I perish with hunger. Okay, he, he, he's reasoned. He understood. He's logical. And you'll notice in that passage that God, when he's talking, you know, God is the father in the instance. He said, this my son was dead, and now he's alive. Do you guys realize that death is departing from the presence of the Lord? It's not, you're not going to stop thinking okay even lazarus and the beggar and the rich man they were both thinking after one of them was in abraham's bosom one's in hell okay your thought life continues on either you're going to be in hell or you're going to be with jesus right the adam when he was hanging out walking in the garden of god god says you know in the day you eat of that fruit you will surely die who knows how much time went by between god saying that and then adam reasoned, you know, and he let some rationale of the devil nip on his heels, and he finally, he wasn't ascending that. He wasn't doing the good fight of faith. It's a fight of faith, people. 
You don't just lay there and have faith. It's something you have to employ. And Adam, he he lost it. He said, okay, well, he just got sick of the fight maybe, you know. Who knows if that was the first time that that he was tempted. Maybe he didn't know. Yeah, it could have been ignorance, but he didn't know. So he should have learned ahead of time. You know, that's why we read our Bibles, so that when we encounter these things, we know ahead of time how to react. Uh, one of them is don't listen to the devil. <laughs> don't talk to a snake. That would be a good clue. So anyway, the prodigal son was dead. Okay. And he came back to dad. And Adam was dead when he was departing from the presence of the Lord. So I'm going to encourage you. Uh, there's a scripture that I, I often refer to. It's Psalm 37, 4. It is delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give ye the desires of thine heart. I want you to remember this day about your encounter with Christ and how your heart beat and how you go, how, how at that moment you realized this is why you're living. To live is Christ, to die is gain. That means your selfish pleasures. You know, Jesus said you've got to hate your own life also. We're not seeking my own will, but the will of the Father that sent us. Okay, we need to, when, when the Bible says repent and do thy first works, he says you've fallen from your first love. We need to get back to that on-fire passion for Jesus Christ when he transformed our lives from sinners headed straight to hell to giving us a passion and a purpose for serving him, for loving him. You remember, you remember when you first encountered him, how your heart beat, and you're like, yes, you've hit the spiritual jackpot. You've met Jesus. You know, look at how Paul, when he was killing Christians, gritting his teeth, he was, you know, he thought he was doing the right thing, you know, and then he met Jesus, and then he went, wrote the prison epistles. This guy was lost, it shipwrecked at sea. I mean, he was stoned and left for dead, and then gets back up and goes right back in the city that stoned him. That is passion. That is purpose. So when you start seeing yourselves doing the signs of apathy, complacency, and lukewarmness, it's time to delight yourself in the Lord. Get off with Him, fast, pray, worship, and rediscover your first love. Amen. If this ministry has touched your life, please consider going over there to conradrocks.net. And, you know, there's a support page. Uh, I'd appreciate it if this is touching your life you consider supporting this ministry. Also, there's um, a free podcast right now. It's Hearing God. It's called Hindrances to the Truth, but I talk a lot about hearing God in that series and the things that keep us from hearing God. Of course, there's Conrad Rock's News, which is um, news Christian news that I find interesting. Love you guys. Thank you for being a part of my life. Till we meet again, dig deeper, go higher. Conrad Rocks. Tune in radio.